discussing divine order, restoration of divine order. We're going to pray a simple prayer. Father, let the divine order of goodness and mercy. It is divine order. Because God has spoken it, goodness and mercy shall follow you. David cited the same thing. Say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Goodness and mercy. I want you to pray and say to the Most High, Father, let your divine order of goodness and mercy be restored. Amen. upon my life and my family. Go ahead and pray. Talk to God. Don't be shy. Talk to him. Let your divine order of goodness and mercy be restored upon me. Be restored upon my family. Be restored upon my children. Be restored upon transformation assembly. Be restored upon my job, my business. Be restored upon my desire, upon my plans. Let your divine order. Father, you said in your word in the book of Romans that only goodness and mercy, Romans chapter 8, only goodness and mercy shall follow us. Father, this is your word. Therefore, it is a divine order. It is a divine proclamation. It is a divine edict. It is a divine law and nothing can change it. Therefore, Father, irrespective of the challenges, irrespective of the forces, Father, let your divine order of goodness and mercy be restored upon our lives, be restored upon our family, be restored upon our health, be restored upon everything that concerns us. And we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, we say hallelujah. hallelujah. As you are standing, I want us to make a declaration. And you can declare this. Hallelujah. Make it big, please. Hallelujah. So we will go sentence by sentence. I wish that we do this from time to time before the preaching happens. To set your mind ready to hear the word. So that you can at least lay your heaviness aside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yeah. Alright, let's begin to declare one to go. I am a child of Yahuwah. For I his spirit with the incorruptible seed of his word. I am washed with the blood of Yahushua, breaking off the curses of sin and death. And now a new redeemed creation in Yahushua. I have been transformed and transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And now manifesting the nature and the character of the Most High through Yahusha Hamashiach in me by the power of His Holy Spirit. I am a son of Yahuwah. I have the mind of Yahusha to understand and know the things of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. I have been filled and empowered by His Spirit to walk in obedience to His Word. And I am untouchable. I am in partnership with Yahusha in this ministry for reconciliation and rehabilitation of his chosen people. I am working with Yah in establishing the kingdom of heaven by the principles and commandments of Yahuwah clearly revealed in the scriptures. I do not walk blind anymore, for my eyes have seen his glory. I am walking in victory already concluded and established for me because I was born. My life is hid with Yahusha, Yahuwah, and I live because he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are statements of faith, Amen. statements of confirmation of what the Father has already done. Amen. Notice everything there has actually been concluded for you and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me today? Yeah. Are you with me today? Yeah. Are you with me today? Yeah. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. you are a winner. Yeah. You are a winner. You are a winner. Please be seated. I'm going to preach very shortly so that we can pray. Hallelujah.
So last week, we stopped in understanding that you are two persons in one. That you have been born of an incorruptible seed that makes you a child of Yahuwah. We stopped in understanding your position and the authority you possess as a child of heaven. This is very, very important. Because if you do not know who you are, it is impossible for you to actually live the exact life the Father has designed for you. So it starts with you knowing who you are. Remember, we are talking about restoring divine order. So, this preaching, my belief is that after you have heard it, you must change things in your life. You begin to demand that certain things will be different in your life. You demand that certain things be different in your family. You demand that certain things happen as the Bible says it. Because it is about restoring divine order. Remember, it is an order, a system. If you can restore godly system around you, in your life, in your family, prayer, reading, and all that, irrespective of the challenge, my brother, my sister, you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. But you need to restore the systems and keep living by it consistently. That's why we are studying this. Restoring divine order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy is a divine order. Mm -hmm. But not everybody is walking in them. But you have to demand for it. You must make a demand for it. If you don't demand that Satan leaves you alone, he will not leave you. You don't cry for Satan. <laughs> Satan, please. <laughs> Satan, don't, don't, don't disturb me anymore. Satan will not leave you. You have to demand. The Bible did not say, plead with Satan to leave you alone. The Bible says, what? What did the Bible say? Huh? Submit to God and resist him. Resist. The Bible didn't say plead. Because the Bible says if you plead from now till next year, Satan will not leave you. So the Bible says resist him. Shake him off. You have to fight. If you don't fight, nothing happens. Hallelujah. So restoring divine order is not going to be by crying. It's going to be by decided actions. Are you with me? Amen. That's what I want us to do. That's why we're studying it. So now, from knowing who we are, I want us to take examples from the disciples. All right? But before we go to disciples, I want to strike a note that is important. You see, the season of Passover is, to me, to me, the most important season. The most important feast you have in the scripture is the feast of Passover. Without it, every other thing is useless. If Israel was not delivered out of Egypt, none of the rest of the feast will happen. It is after they have been brought out of Egypt that every other feast can follow. So the feast of Passover is number one. The same thing. If we are not saved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, every other thing is useless. Have you seen anybody trying to celebrate any other thing without being alive? Only the living celebrates. The dead don't celebrate. How many times have you seen dead people coming around to dance? Only in the Michael Jackson movie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Only in Michael Jackson music and movie. The dead don't celebrate. So the Bible says the dead cannot praise you. But only the living can praise him. Amen. Are you with me? So the Passover is a celebration of moving from death to life. Moving from corruption to incorruptible. Moving from weakness to strength. Passover is about moving from slavery to liberty. It is the most important feast. No wonder Satan attacked it heavily. Heavily. But the restoration has come. 
So it is important for believers to understand. Spiritual seasons are so important, just like natural seasons are. You see, here we are crying that we have so much rain and we have flood. In Europe, they are crying that they don't have enough rain and there's no water. Rivers are drying up, springs are drying up. Not enough drinking water right now in Europe, the whole of Europe, including England. In fact, London said it is the driest for over 30 years. Drinking water is a problem. But here, we have it. The rainy season is a wonderful time. The heavens opens up and gives us fresh water. And it keeps coming and coming. And sometimes you say, oh, this rain is too much. This rain is too much. Don't come anymore. But you don't understand that as long as it's coming, the earth takes it and it is reserved inside the ground. Inside the ground. That's why you can dig the well of water and you get good water to drink. But if the most high don't send up rain for you, the, the, the ground will dry up. So even when you dig, 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 you won't find. Isn't that amazing? But seasons are important. Some people are in a good season in their lives. Some people are in a tough season in their lives. Some people are in a very happy season. Others are in seasons of tears. But always remember, every season has time. Hallelujah. Every season is time. So God sent Joseph to Egypt and said to Joseph, tell the Egyptians that they are enjoying a season of plenty. But a season of drought is coming. A season of leanness is coming. Otanisi measure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. A season of austerity mm. where you're not going to have enough food. Mm. See, it's coming. Mm. Therefore, what do you do as a wise man in your season of plenty? Save some. Mm. Tell your neighbor, 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 don't be a spender in chief. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, save some. Because after that season, you're going to have another season that is going to be tough. And so you can only eat what you were able to save. Seasons are important. So now, we are in an important season of another renaissance. And this season, the demand for restoring divine order is paramount. Paramount very very important hallelujah so in that season the bible says the word and the spirit came at the same time moses received the word and when jesus was living it was the same time that the holy spirit came and i want to point out that that was very very important because it points to the release of divine order and the process that believers and Israel are going through. Similarly, similarly, when we studied the book of Exodus, we saw that everything that happened to Egypt is the same thing going on with the church. No difference. No difference. Everything Egypt faced, I mean Israel faced in Egypt and in the wilderness, the same thing the church is facing. Really, if you want to really know what will happen, how it will happen, I told you, study Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you will see everything there. Everything is revealed. It's a mirror. Hallelujah. It is a mirror. So, in this our time, we must fasten the process of restoration of the divine order to also avoid serious calamities in our communities because judgment has been triggered. Whenever we reject divine order of God, judgment is triggered automatically. Israel, I put you in my land. Do this, do this, do this, you will enjoy my land. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, you have problem. Very simple. Each time we move out of divine order, we have issues. We have 
serious issues. So in Second Chronicles, the Bible says, if my people call by my name, will humble themselves and do what? Pray. Second, seek my face. Third, turn from their wicked ways. See that? It's a return to divine order. Turning from your wicked ways is returning to divine order. So God says, when you return to divine order, I will return to you. That's what God is saying. In the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 19, can somebody read that for us? So that we can shout out a minute of prayer from that passage. Daniel chapter 9 verse 19. Hallelujah. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 19. Yes, sir. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake. My God, for your city and your people are called by your name. He says, hear and listen, O oh Lord. Don't delay. If you look at some of the things that are happening around us, this is the prayer we need to pray. Father, don't delay anymore. Answer us now. Answer us now. Isaiah put this prayer in a different way. Isaiah said, open your heavens and come down now and hear us now. I told you about a child that prayed a prayer in the, in the village in, 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 in Kenya where they were in a motherless baby's home in an orphanage. And a child was born without a mother. And there was no feeding bottle to feed this child warm water or warm milk so that this child will not die. And when they picked this child up, nothing. That child basically had three to seven days before that child would die if no feeding bottle arrives. And so on the second day, they started to pray. And one of the children said that she wants to pray. This is after they had prayed and said, Amen. That child said, I must pray. They said, Okay. And this child said, God, you know, this child will die. After three days, if no feeding bottle comes here, therefore it will be useless after the child has died and then you are sending feeding bottle. And God, remember, as you are sending for the bottle, also send the teddy bear so that she can play with the teddy bear. <laughs> An amazing prayer, right? Yeah. He said, God, send it now, not, not later, now. And send a teddy bear. The child has three days. Funny enough, everybody cried. Hearing that child pray with such audacity and authority. Everybody cried. Nobody believed anything would happen. They were just waiting for this child to die. But on that third day morning, that same third day morning, a courier arrived with a package for one of the staff working in that orphanage. And as she packed out her things, she noticed that there is another small parcel inside, cotton. And she opened it. Lo and behold, there is a small feeding bottle Lo and behold, there is also a small teddy bear. <laughs> and she screamed and ran out of her room, crying with a bottle and a teddy bear. This is a time to pray with such faith, such audacity, telling God what needs to happen. And it should happen timely. It should happen timely. Daniel said, Father, hear us now. Listen. Hear us now. Come now for your people. Your people call by your name. Don't delay. Don't delay. If you, if you pray with laxity, with no interest, your prayer will not touch heaven. When you look at those that pray, you always see that the Bible says, and they cried unto God. Amen. Cried. They screamed. They shouted out loud to God. They prayed with heaviness of heart. Shouted out. They, they were not joking about it. Have you seen the way we pray these days? We talk about coming to God. Many people don't take the presence of God seriously anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is why God is also not taking us seriously. But if we take God seriously,
seriously, God will take us seriously. He says, if you are crooked to me, I will also be crooked to you. To restore divine order in our land, in our homes, we must start to be serious. We have to be. I have told you this. As it is in my own country, Nigeria, it is in the Philippines. It is in many places. We are God's people, children of Abraham, even in the flesh. We need to begin to take the scripture serious. No more jokes. No more religion. But serious. Serious. If we do that, we will see the presence of God. God will act for us. He is not deaf. Do you know that God is not deaf? He's not deaf. He can see. Yes. He can hear. Yes. Yes. But we need to take him serious. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Amen. we must take God seriously. Amen. So Daniel said, Oh Lord, hear us. Listen to us. Forgive us. Don't be far away from us anymore. Forgive us. You know, sometimes it is just how I our conscience. God is a forgiver. God forgives as long as you ask with all your heart. He forgives. But as long as you don't keep going back to that thing over and over again, then he will feel you are insulting him. And that's a dangerous place to be in. If God ever feels you are insulting him, you are finished. You are finished. Don't make him feel you are insulting him. Very important. Don't be fooled. You know, the book of Hebrews says the same thing. It says, it says, don't be fooled. Whatsoever a man so that he will surely reap. He uses the word surely. That's an interesting passage. He said, surely. So don't make God begin to see you as somebody coming to play games with him. No. Take him serious. Now, when he forgives you, he moves on your behalf, you will be blessed. He says, Father, for your own sake, for your own name, remember your people, remember your city that are called by your name. We are called by his name. You know, we are called by his name. The Bible says all that have received Jesus have become Christ. If you have received him, you belong to him. You belong to him. In fact, where I come from, no child has a name without God attached to it. No child. You can, no matter the situation, no child has a name without God this, God that, God this, God that. No matter. Even if that child was born by an idol worshiper, still has God attached to it. Even if the father is an armed robber, he has God attached to it. Even if the mother is a prostitute, there's God attached to that child. Restoring divine order is important. So the father is calling us to return to his divine order so that our lives will be different. This is because the earth is without order. Let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter 82. And let me read that place for us. Now that, that's an important passage and I want you to understand how important that passage is. Psalms chapter 82. All right? 82. We'll read verse number five. Verse number five. He says, they do not know, neither do they understand, that they walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of cause, out of order. They do not know, neither do they understand. Can you imagine that? They don't know. They don't understand. Look at the world we are living in today. Many people don't know and don't understand what is happening around them. The Bible said they do not know. They do not understand that they are walking on in darkness. 
and all the foundations of the earth are out of cause. Can you imagine how many thousands of years ago this was written? Think about it. Thousands of years ago. But David was clearly prophesying what we will be facing today. The foundations. He didn't say the earth. He says the foundations are out of cause. There are many things we are doing on earth today without knowing that the foundations of the things we are doing are all a lie. I told you before, many things we are doing are all false. We are living a lie. A lot of the history you are taught is a lie. The foundations are out of course. But hold on to the truth. For you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. The earth is out of course. This is why you have to hold on to the Bible. So you have to hold on to God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, hold on to your God. No one that the Bible said, they that know their God shall be strong. Shall be strong. Shall be strong. You need to be strong in these days. You have to be strong. For your family, you have to be strong. And tell your children, this is how it must be. This is how it must be. Forget what the teacher said in the school. This is what it is. You have to tell them. Tell your people, this is the truth. Say no. It's not right. Tell them clearly, it's not right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't say, yo, oh, no problem. No, 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 no. Be strong about it. Be stern. Be angry. You don't know. I want to use clear terms. Be angry. Say, no, you can't do this. You have to be strong about it. Save the soul. It's no more a joke. If you laugh about it, the person will also laugh and walk away and walk to hell. Mm, yeah. You are laughing, but the person is walking all the way to hell. Mm. That's the truth. Yes. So it's not a laughing matter because you know the person is going into damnation, eternal damnation. Mm. So why laugh about something that is going to destroy your life forever? Mm. Forever. You're not going to get that person back tomorrow. The person is gone and is gone forever. So you be angry about it and tell the person, no, change your ways. Change this and God will bless you. If the person listens to you, sit the person down. Spend one hour to explain. In fact, if you can forget your job, that they forget it, explain. God will be happy with you. Because you have shown God that you care about the most important thing on earth, which is human life the most important thing we must restore divine order and I want you to know you have a job to do that's why I'm saying it this way we have a job to do our communities are decaying and they are decaying very very fast look at how fast things are happening these days so crazy very crazy it's, it's I'm wondering what is going on Demons are released to destroy people. And you too, that has been anointed to save people, don't go to bed. Don't go sleeping. Take the job seriously. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. take that job seriously. So the earth is out of order. This is the reason why we are suffering different kinds of affliction. Can you see the afflictions around us? You never know which is going to be next. Mm. Yeah. 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 All these are because the earth is out of order. The foundations are out of order. So afflictions are arising. But the beautiful thing about it is that in the Mashiach, there is salvation. There is deliverance. There is protection. Hallelujah, somebody. There is healing. Great, great healing. Only for those who believe. Don't be afraid. Didn't you hear the testimony? We give the most high praise. He keeps protecting his own people. Oh, yeah. I am in, 
I talk with all our friends here and there, both those that are here and those that have traveled, you know, many of our members that travel. I talk with them. They are all protected, living healthily. We give the most high praise for that. Truly, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous shall run in and be saved. Now, let me conclude in this page. You see, some families have some kind of addiction that has become a generational condition. Even some of us here, we know that there are certain things that our families suffer on a generational basis, certain conditions. It's not basically sickness, but it is also a sickness because anything that stops you from fulfilling God's glory for you is a disease. Many families are suffering many different things. There are some families people don't get married. There are some families they get married, they break up. You you come in, you see first woman broke broke up marriage, come back home. Second one, the same. Third one, the same. That's not right. Something is wrong. And you must tackle it in prayer. You must pray about it. You cannot take it, you know, simple as a joke. You see a grandmother, she had a broken family. She came back. You see her child, her daughter, broken family came back. You also see third generational daughter, also broken family came back, all at home. Mm. Something is wrong. These are conditions that you need to fight in prayer. It is a disorder. And the solution is in the restoration of God's divine order. This is why we are discussing what we are discussing. I really want you to see how satanic attacks are going on. Sometimes we take it lightly, but we will no more take it lightly. The Bible says, when we know the devices of the enemy, we will behave differently. You must know the devices. Know the devices. Know the devices. For some of us, some things we're going through is procrastination. Whenever a blessing is about to come, you find yourself procrastinating to do the very right thing that will ensure that blessing. You must attack it. You must. Let me tell you this. Let me also say this clearly. See, you see, curses. Many of us are afraid of curses. Right? Many of you are so afraid of curses. If somebody says, I'm going to curse you, you begin to shiver. Curses are words. Words. Somebody say words. words. Yeah. Curses are words. But they are words that are empowered. Just like the wheat, the, I mean the preaching you are hearing now are also words that are empowered. Are you with me? I want to show you something now so that fear will die out of your life. Fear must surely die out of your life. I don't know how many people that have said to me, I will curse you and you will die, but I'm still living here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guru Maharaj. Some of you that are from Nigeria, you know Guru Maharaj. I went to threaten him in those days, 1986. And he said to me, I have cursed you. You have seven days, you will die. Seven days has not passed. <laughs> now from 1986, I'm still here. Now that same Guru Maharaj, is notorious for killing many people, known for taking away the life of people just by speaking it. It's not a joke. I'm telling you the truth, it's not a joke. But what is the difference? Understanding what curses are, and understanding when any curse can take effect and when it cannot take effect. And also knowing that you have the power to break the effect of a curse. You may not know when it was spoken, Somebody may do it in secret you didn't know. But when you realize it, you have the ability to break the effect and stop the influences. Curses are words. Words that are empowered.
Jesus also said, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Empowered. When words are empowered, something is behind it. Not every word carry power. But there are some people that their words carry power. Remember that. Not everybody can say something and you are afraid. But there are some people, if they say something, you need to think twice. Because what they tell you is surely going to happen. But not everybody. Not everybody. But I always say to everyone, be careful of doing anything wrong to old people. People with 9 to 5, gray hair. Be careful of insulting them. Be careful of breaking their hearts. Be careful of doing anything that will make them cry in an unhappy mood. You are in trouble. Because even if they don't say anything, the angels assigned for them will be angry with you. Such people, their words carry power. Especially people that are over 60, 65 years old that you call elderly. Please, don't insult them. Don't break their hearts. Don't say anything that will wound them unwarrantedly. In fact, the Bible actually admonishes us. The Bible puts it this way. It says, do not. Do not. That's the, what does what Bible uses? It says, do not. Do not confront. Do not insult an elder. Don't insult, insult an elder. It's dangerous. But you can state your position clearly without insulting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, don't insult spiritual people. Dangerous. Unless you know your own position. Because we are all equal in grace, but not equal in anointing, in position of authority. So unless you know yourself very well, you know what you're doing, and you know you have the right or spiritual calling to do what you're doing, then you can do that. Don't insult people in authority. People in authority, remember, if they are in authority, they can use physical authority. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. If somebody is holding God, he is in authority. So before you insult that person, you be careful. Hallelujah. You must know if you are prepared enough to deal with it. People in authority, don't look for their trouble. But finally, don't insult the book. The book, the word of life. Be careful with it. Your parents, father and mother, you already know. Because it says honor them so that your days will be. And if you don't honor them, your days may be cut short. Do whatever you can to honor your father and mother, irrespective of how much pain they cost you. Honor them. So that you will live a long life. And let me give you a secret. There is a reason why the dishonor of Ham did not affect Ham, but came all the way to his son. So sometimes, affliction may jump a father and go to children. So be careful. But finally, as a believer, I want you to know, curses are words. When somebody curses you, refute it. Mm -hmm. Reject it. Mm -hmm. Say something right there immediately. Mm -hmm. Don't wait tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't wait tomorrow. Curses are like acid. If acid touch you, do you wait tomorrow to go and use water to wash it? You run quickly and find water immediately and, and wash it off. The longer you wait, the more damage it will do. That's how they are. So if somebody says it to your hearing, immediately refute it. State your own position of righteousness and reject it. Amen. Then the word will be blocked. Mm. You see this in movies, but you don't understand that that's actually what happens. Mm. The word will be blocked. Mm. But what if you didn't know and somebody speaks mm. against you mm. and releases a curse? Mm. 
but you now begin to feel the effect before you know this is where it is more dangerous then you go for battle and before you go for battle make sure need your balama through energy go with the blood of the lamb before you go for the battle go and dip yourself in the blood of the lamb why every curse is stemming from a life therefore it is coming out of sacrifice every life is a sacrifice the bible says make yourself a living sacrifice are you getting me now? Yes. Stepping out of sacrifice. Mm. So, there is always a reason for a curse to be released. Mm. But the legitimacy will now be proven mm. when you challenge it. Mm. Are you with me now? Yes. So dip yourself in the blood. Plead the blood over your life and say, I'm standing to challenge every curse. Mm. Whether it is a curse of sickness or disease or financial issue or whatever. Stand and begin to make your own demands and your own declaration based on the book finally the bible says a curse without a cause will not stick but today we are seeing curses without reasons affecting people yeah there are many people suffering under curses today they did nothing to warrant it but somebody spoke it and they are afflicted and it's affecting them I told you about one of our sisters here, even in her own case. This happened in some part of Mindanao. You know, a man just touched her and she lost her senses. The man took her into the bush, did whatever, and she, her life was messed up. Messed up. Her body continued to smell for years until one day she came to me and told me what happened. It was a curse. We had to break it. Now, is everywhere powers of darkness operate everywhere mm -hmm. but when you notice that there is a curse operating against you you need to take it serious mm -hmm. and pay the price to break it mm -hmm. pay the price to break it take it fast take it fast and pray and have it drop mm -hmm. next week I will deal with this breaking of curses as we continue. Because to restore divine order, you must also destroy some evil trees that are planted. Before you plant, you must uproot some evil. Now, very simple prayer we're going to pray now. I am yours, O Father, I belong to you. Everything in me and around me that don't belong to you, I ask you to uproot them in Jesus' name. Can we pray that prayer? I am yours and I belong to you. Everything in me that are not of you, uproot them. Uproot them. Uproot them. Uproot them. Uproot them. Every influence in my life around my family that are not of you, uproot them, destroy those influences. Every influence in the lives of my children, my siblings, my brothers and sisters that are not of you, Father, uproot them, uproot them, uproot them. Every influence against my children that are not of you, uproot them. Every influence against my husband that is not of you, uproot it. Uproot it. Every influence in the life of my family members, my wife, my children, my siblings, my in-laws, my mother, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let them be broken now. Be broken. Be broken. Uproot them. Uproot them. Father, uproot them. I, 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 I surrender to the heavens right now. Let the heavens uproot every evil that has been going on in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yahushua Mashiach. Every evil influence. Every evil influence. Be broken. I banish you from our families. In the mighty name of Jesus. Second prayer. 
we are going to pray and say to the Father, we surrender our families and we ask that divine order be restored in our family. Let the heart of everyone in our family begin to go through a transformative power right now that everyone begins to seek God in truth and in spirit. Let's pray that prayer. Father, everyone in our families, everyone, oh Father, among all the children of Chiwese, family of Ekwogo, the family of Ekwogo, Father, the family of Ekwogo, I bring all the kindreds before you. I ask that their hearts begin to feel your presence. Let the power of the Holy Spirit move upon these four kindreds right now. Move through our families in the mighty name of Jesus, Yahusha Moshiach. Let every evil heart be melted, be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that has given his soul or her soul to Satan, to, to devils, to operate and practice witchcraft and break that cord of witchcraft from them. I curse that cord of witchcraft to die and dry up. And I demand Father, that the angel of heaven shall walk through the family. Let your hearts right now begin to seek you. Let the fear of heaven come upon every one of them. Let the fear of God come upon everyone in our family. That the righteousness of God begin to manifest. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Those that will not respond, those that will not yield to the Holy Spirit, Father, let the hammer of heaven break everything that is standing before you we brought them to your righteousness father every family in transformation assembly we bring before you right now we ask for the fire of the holy spirit to begin to burn in all our families right now right now right now and break the curse of sickness and disease father we pray for the mother of god and we your fire will begin to flow through her body right now, right now, right now. Let your fire burn through her body and break every evil forces of disease. Ah, my father, let the arteries right now receive an electric feeling, electric feeling, electric feeling that restores all the arteries, all the neurological systems to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of sickness and disease from our family. Let the healing of God begin to flow. Let the healing of God begin to flow. Let the healing of God begin to flow. Let the healing of the Holy Spirit begin to flow. Father, every family in transformation assembly, families that don't hold on, family where separation and divorce is going on, I break that spirit of separation. I break that spirit of divorce. I break that spirit of evil from our families. And I demand righteousness. I rebuke that spirit. Let our families receive your healing. Receive your healing. Wives will love their husbands. Husbands will love their wives. Children will love their parents. In the mighty name of Jesus, I wish you a
Father, today, according to your word, you said if two of us shall agree touching a thing, it shall be done. Father, in this house, we all agree that your divine order for our lives, as it is written in heaven, that it begins to happen right now for us. And we begin to declare thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Begin to declare it. Father, over our lives, over my life, over the transformation assembly, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven in our lives. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven in our families. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven concerning our jobs and businesses, our finances. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done concerning our children. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done concerning our families, our, our assembly. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done concerning our lives. Kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be this in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. We shall shout, we pray, and we all say hallelujah. hallelujah. We all say hallelujah. hallelujah. We all say hallelujah. hallelujah.